Howdy y'all, this is Texas Gaming Industries here, and welcome back to another episode of my Let's Play Railway Empire. In the previous episode, we began to expand our railroad operations by constructing a couple of new industries in some of the local cities, so we can use some of the local commodities they're producing. And, in this episode, we're going to keep doing that, as well as acquiring some new locomotives. Now, Denver is producing meat, but we need to make sure we have a steady supply of cattle. So, we'll connect this cattle ranch to the main line, and assign a locomotive, to, well, actually two, to pick up a load of cattle and deliver it straight to Denver. Put in one, put in the Rogers 260, put a caboose, and I'll let this train travel first into Chicago, well, I mean, uh, Denver, before we add the second locomotive. Alright, market crier. Haven't had one of those in a while. Let's put it on comfort to increase our passenger numbers. And we have near we have eight one thousand eight hundred and seventy two innovation points. We could unlock some new things, but let's save these for a little bit. Right now, Mile City Oops, a negative minus six hundred and forty seven thousand dollars. Not good. But let's add a tourist site so people can travel to Miles City. Buy up the brewery. Part near Baker City. No thanks. And place down a furniture factory. That way, furniture can be delivered to some of the local towns. Let's upgrade it three times. Upgrade that. And upgrade this. Let's basically add another train carrying this load. Well, there's two. But might as well add a third and then a fourth. Speaking of which, how does my moguls look, by the way? Interstate Commerce Act passed. Ah uh, yes, this was basically the government's way to make sure the railroads were not cutting their prices so they can attract customers and passengers away from competing railroads. So this is going to be a little bit of a problem. Well, technically, the effects of the Interstate Commerce Commission do not affect the game or the trains at all. Bad condition. And that's the train from El Paso to Denver. And it has meat, so it needs to have a, hmm, a refrigeration car. Let's see. That's that's odd. It should be being maintained. But it's, it's the breakdown is... Ugh. Might as well just add a, a maintenance bonus and engineer requirement for that train. Let's see. Train due to slow amount of supplies. Uh, no thanks. Let's basically add a servicing tower near the Taylor Estate and Vegetable Farm. Let's see. Salt Lake is now actually big enough for a new industry. Let's place down a dairy farm and then connect this milk farm to the main line. That way, loads of cheese can be. Well, loads of milk can be delivered in into the city and then processed into cheese for various customers along the railroad. The Rogers 260 and the refrigeration car. Let's see. Now, dairy products can be delivered to Kingman because it's big enough. Because a city to actually wanting supplies of cheese need at least a least of 55,000 residents. So meaning the the only supplier of ch the only place that's getting cheese is Kingman, and to possibly a future extent San Francisco, if I can find a way to keep the city growing. It just needs corn and it needs logs. Well, thing is, I'll have to basically. Well, considering it needs corn. I bet I could basically ex build, operate a train from the Miller Estate and connect it to the main line here. But it will require some serious construction work. First of all, I'm going to loop the track past this section, then basically build a bridge over the main line. Now let's see if I can get like a 0%. No dice. Let's mention, I want to make sure it's at least a fair tunnel with no fill-ins in the middle. We'll just leave it as it is. 
put a zero percent there. Seven percent. That is a lot of tunnels. I am not building that many tunnels just for an overpass. It shouldn't make s this doesn't make sense. How can a tunnel like this be difficult to build over a main line? Well, if that's the case. Then you will need a cutting, but they won't work pretty. Hmm. Let's see. Why don't I basically build the cross over here? There we go. That'll do. Extend down. And then basically connect to this part. Build another crossover on this section. So the new line from the corn farm to San Francisco is basically going over two mainline tracks. And I had to delete that curve because it was too tight for a switch. Now with that done, let's basically add a couple more signals to keep the corn train from crashing to the passenger and freight trains on the main line. As well as building a set of signals here, as well as adding a supply tower for that locomotive. Because this train will be a little bit of a long distance, huh, I have no trains running from the Miller estate. Odd. Well, anyway, I'll put the Mastodon in charge of the train to the Miller estate, well, from Miller estate to San Francisco, and I'll put the Rogers 260 mobile charge of delivering corn down to Los Angeles. And look at that, we made a million dollars. And then run another train of corn to Wanamuka. That will probably keep the city from seriously a population decline. Let's see, is Kingman connected? Yeah, it's connected to a corn farm, so I'm good. Plus, to a lesser extent, I can connect these two unconnected track nodes and then basically reconnect it here. That way, passengers can travel from Los Angeles to Carson City. Which they already can. This will basically serve more as a use for carrying corn into the city. Or actually, a train from Kingman to Carson City instead. That'll actually work a lot better. Let's put the mobile in charge. It's not carrying on. There's not much corn being produced, so I'll have to upgrade that a bit. And then, operate a train between Kingman and Carson City. Since Kingman and... Well, Carson City and Kingman are producing meat. There's no need for a freight train just yet. Once the city is big enough, I'll basically deliver, well, a load of, you know, you know what I mean, freight to help the city grow somehow. Natural disaster in Fukushima. Oh, yes. Another advertisement from the J Railway Empire Japan DLC. Now then, let's basically unlock a new locomotive. Let's get the deck upon, unlock bribery, and deep pockets. Now, the bribery will allow me to build, construct, construct buildings at 5% lower prices, while this basically allows me to win an auction and decrease the amount of money I need to pay when I win an auction by 5%. And the new extension, the Northern Pacific Railroad's 210 deck upon. It's been basically eight in-game years since I last unlocked the new locomotive. At least the freight train from Wanamuka the Kingman is doing pretty well. And Carson City is now growing, thanks for the addition of delivery of corn. All it just needs is basically a little help with its cattle operations. Let's basically add another 280 consolidation to the operation. 
so I lost 446,000. Not as bad as the two years prior, but we could do better. A connection bonus. Hmm, an iron ore mine. Well, the only products that require iron ore is either a steel mill or a tool makers. I already have a steel works, and I basically need coal nearby to produce tools. I mean, I could eventually extend this track, go around, and head into Nashville. Because Nashville is actually producing chemicals. Wait a minute. I better have a look on what cities require it. They require tools. Pittsburgh requires tools. Hmm. Well, actually, Chicago needs some tools as well. So, let's basically convert one of the industries here. Hmm. There's tons of fruit and sugar available. It's time to basically get that upgraded. Let's basically get rid of the chemical works. And then place down the tool makers. Because another industry can produce chemicals with coal. I'm pretty sure I can convert a lantern to produce chemicals later on. Not only we're gonna get this bonus, we'll basically be able to earn money with this new operation. Perfect. And from the distance. Hmm? Wait a minute. Memphis already has a steel. Hmm. Well, actually. Let's see. How am I gonna get the iron from here all the way to Nashville without basically trying to grow this city? Not to mention, this section of track hasn't even been done with single yet. I guess I'll have to basically build a special spur, travel over to a single bridge, and then rejoin the line outside of Memphis. Not efficient, but at least it will keep the freight train and keep the iron ore train from delaying the mainline passenger freight trains. No 0%, but that's fine. But I'll take that 0% though. We'll basically double track it for later. Just in case if we got more loads of iron ore delivered than per usual. And to make sure that the locomotive is well supplied, we'll put a supply tower there. Now, we'll basically need to upgrade to bring in some. Now, we just need to do is deliver iron ore and lumber. Cattle companies, ugh, I'll pay. Now, with lumber being delivered, all I just need now is to deliver some coal to deliver some iron ore. Indian territory open to settlers. Ah yes, the westward expansion. And look at that. One more year and then we're entering the gay nineteen well, the gay eighteen nineties. Now then, let's put the on a caboose. Place a speed man on board. Put it as a number one. Promoter. Let's see. What cities? Well, Tuck Tuxton is basically now big enough for a new industry. But what industry should I put in it? Well, hmm. There's no coal and iron ore nearby. There's already furniture being made in Kingman. Publishing is not available. There's no fruit or vegetable. There's no fruit or sugar farms nearby. <clears throat> well, might as well make clothing here too. It's always so nice to see how your railroad has basically changed once you basically build all these tracks. See all these trains running around. Okay, now that the King Colliery train 1 is now on, 
I'm heading towards Nashville. I could now send another train to follow it with a load of iron ore. Now, we still have enough points. I think I'll unlock the Consolidation B in maybe about now. Now, this variation of the C of the Consolidation is basically the more modern variant. It doesn't have that rear side gear thing or something. And this engine is basically based off of a C and O design, the G5, which was used for hauling coal. Now, this locomotive will basically replace some of the freight locomotives on the main line that basically are not as powerful as the two, as the, well, this one. You know what I mean. Now, it doesn't have as much power as the Mastodon, but it can basically prove to be quite useful on some hilly sections. Like, for example, the freight train running from Denver to Albuquerque is being a little too much. It doesn't have a whole bunch of speed, but it can basically climb the grade a little better. Or maybe not. 115 or 20. Guess I'll have to put the Mastodon in charge. I'll put that other 280 somewhere. Well, maybe I might as well replace the original 280s with this class. And designate one of the older ones into a service that's a lot more useful for it. Which? Hmm. Right. No suitable freight available, and that's between New York. That basically means we have enough chemicals stored here. And look at that, we're now in the 1890s. Only 10 more years left in this deck. 10 more years, and we'll be entering the 20th century. What a big change from basically seeing how... Just think, our company will basically be over 50 years old by this point. And soon enough, the railroad industry will be about to change completely within time. Well, actually, since our company started in the 1830s, we had our 50th anniversary back in the 1880s. So, technically, this is the 60th anniversary of our company. Plus, at the same time, a year from now, our passenger cars will be updated again. Gone will be these small, wild western-style coaches, and in, into the fray, some more modern celestial passenger cars. Let's basically add a couple more crews. And while we're at it, might as well unlock the next two engines. The New York Central 440 American and the 242 Columbia. We'll also unlock the Villain's Ball, the Steam Excavator or Steam Shovel, the Columbia Jackhammer, and the Bestos Installation. Now, the next two engines is the P Pennsylvania Railroad D12 and the Atlantic 442, which we'll basically save for possibly the next episode. Now, the Columbian and New York Central 440s are really good, but to be honest, I'd rather save that 440 for the express run between the East and West Coast. People raised their voices for Parliament election in Japan. So, again, the Transcontinental Passenger Service will basically be handled by the new 440, while the rest of the Id while the Idnions will be replaced by the Reno class. Let's see, what else? Hmm. Well, the city is. Let's basically increase the amount of beer they're producing. Houston is big enough for chemicals, but has it been delivering any? Oh, it's at 100,000 residents, and I only deliver 52% of the car loads needed. And not to mention, now we could basically start producing newspapers. Let's see. We got. Let's see what city is producing paper right now. This mark is. And. Hmm. Sioux Falls is making clothes. Wow, city. Let's see. 
hasn't been delivering any lumber lately. So, let's basically add in the publishing office. Now, trains of paper can be delivered, and newspapers then can be delivered across the country. Such as this freight train is now. And, while we're at it, might as well basically give all of my locomotives a bit of an overhaul. This basically means giving my Reno an overhaul. My C-Class Shays. Mastodons. My Class B Shays. My Brooks 260 Moguls. As well as my Inyos. Eighty Inyo class locomotives. That's that's actually a really good record. Speaking of which. Army Massacres Indians. Now then, 1891. The introduction of the new Smarters and Passenger Cars. I think the New York to Pittsburgh train will be the first to accept these new passenger cars. I think. Nope. The next the train next to it, it does. Now these passenger cars are a lot bigger and heavier, so that means this class of be replaced. First, the NYC Mogul will basically replace the Reno. And then the Reno will replace the Inyos. Because the Reno is actually a tiny bit more powerful. It's not as powerful as the Reno, as the Inyo, but at least it can still haul this passenger train. Does look actually pretty good with those Celestial coaches, I must say. Right, the 440 American will be rolling into the city of New York to finish its run, and let's have a look at how much money it's been taking. Over a million dollars in passenger revenue alone. That is incredible. Speaking of which, how much money is my trains making? Let's basically go straight to the top. The train that does hasn't been making much revenue yet was the Miller Estate to Los Angeles line. Which, have I started operating yet? Let me see. Uh, yeah, I actually have. The most is basically my transcontinental passenger train. And the second is the Jacksonville to Atlanta Express. But I think with all what's been going on, I think we'll basically call this an episode, guys. So if you like this episode of Railway Empire, please be sure to give a like and a comment, as well as subscribe to Texas Gaming Industries for future videos being uploaded every Friday at around 12 o'clock p.m. Central Standard U.S. time. Once again, this is Texas Gaming Industries saying thank you very much for watching this episode, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!